as I was thinking about tonight and being given uh, only three hours, uh, um, just because of everything, I thought, what, what can I really, uh, can I say? And I just felt I wanted to talk about some questions that we need to ask ourselves, I believe, as we go into 2023. Uh, it is important because if you have anything about you, you will make some New Year's resolutions. Now, if you're anything like me, my resolutions for 2023 are the same ones as I made for 2022. <laughs> and that was because in 2022, I didn't do them in 2020. And of course, I made them in 2019, hoping, but of course, COVID, we blame COVID for everything, of course. So that's why I didn't fulfill mine. But there you go. But I thought it'd be good to have a few questions just to go away, take away with ourselves, um, that I feel that God wants us to ask ourselves as we go into this. And the question is, what is your one thing? You know, when we make New Year's resolutions, we end up making many resolutions and we end up not really achieving any because we've not actually put down to one. But if we could just get one down... And then the next year we could do another one. Then at the end of, if you think to yourself, after a decade, you've got 10 new disciplines, 10 new characteristics, 10 new things that you've been able to implement into your life. Isn't that good? And so the first uh, thing I wanted to say is Isaiah 43 says this, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past, see I am doing a new thing, now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. God is interested in our future. And he has a plan for you and for me in 2023, even if you don't have a plan. So even if you don't know where you're going or what you're going to do, God knows your plan. And if you will listen to God, you can know his plan and you can follow something that has destiny written at its very core. Because God wants the best for you and for me. He wants better for you than you want for you because he knows you and he created you, he formed you, he shaped you and he knows exactly what his purpose is for your life. And you know, sometimes, I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes you can look around a room and you can look around in life, wherever that situation might be, it might be the workplace, it, it could be school, university, or any number, and you often you're comparing yourself with someone else and you can feel so inadequate. Is it just me? But so often you think, how come I get to be able to do this? And so I believe that this year we need to ask ourselves as we go into 2023, in other words, the key for 2023, I thought, oh, I might like that, a rhyme, there you go, that's the best it ever gets, the key for 2023 is your one thing. And the first question is this, what one thing do you desire from God in 2023? What one thing do you desire from God in 2023? David in Psalm 27 said this, One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. That was David's one thing was the presence of God. I want to tell you, we need God in the good times as well as the bad times. We need God 24-7 in our lives, do we not? Yes. So this year, let me ask you, what is the one thing that you desire from the Lord? It might be you have a family friend or some colleague that you think, I'd love for them to know Jesus this year. Make that your one thing for the year. And say, Lord, I'm going to seek your face. I'm going to keep asking you every day for such and such to know you as Lord and Savior. It might be an addiction. It might be a habit you have. It could be any number of things in your life. What is the one thing that you desire from the Lord? Yes? And don't everybody say a better marriage. <laughs> the second question that you need to ask yourself is what one thing do I lack 
in my spiritual life? What one thing do I lack in my spiritual life? And what's really quite interesting is that in Mark chapter 10, a rich man has an encounter with Jesus and he asks Jesus, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus says to him, have you kept all the commandments? And of course, with great pride, the the rich man said, well, yes, I have. I've kept all of the commandments. And then Jesus, of course, being having insight into uh, into this man's heart, he says to him, well, this, and this is what he says, in, um, in, in the same chapter, he said, Jesus looked to him and loved him. So he never does it in a condemning way. But he says, one thing you lack. He said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went sad, went away sad because he had great wealth. What is the one thing that you lack. In other words, what is the one thing that God is asking you to do, like you're saying to this this rich guy, is there one thing in your life that you've not done that God's asked you to do, that God wants you to do? What is it that's lacking in your life that if you will do this one thing this year will make a difference for the rest of the year? Because obedience brings the power of God. It brings the blessing of God. brings the presence of God when we obey It is so important to us. I don't know what that be. It could be Bible reading. It could be prayer. It could be, you know, being in an accountable relationship. It could be part of being in a connect group. It could be tithing. It could be involved in a ministry. It could be any number of things. It might be that you've stopped, say, reading your Bible. And so you need this year to start reading your Bible because that's what you like. The third, what uh, what one thing do you need to let go is that is what one thing you need to let go. Paul wanted to know Jesus better. <clears throat> he didn't want just to know about him. He wanted to know him. He wanted to know his power. He wanted to know his resurrection power. He wanted to know him better. And so Paul's one thing is this. In Philippians, brother, uh, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but 500 things I do. No, but 10 things I do. But one thing I do, forgetting what is and pressing on and straining towards what is ahead. I want to say to you this year, will you press on? You need to forget in order to press on to what God is doing in 2023 in your life. If you will just grab and say, Lord, I want your one thing for my life. Because if you'll have his his one thing, it's worth a thousand of any other things. There is no comparison to Jesus and the one thing he has for your life. Is that all right? That is what God wants to do for you and for me today. This one thing is what David said in Psalm 56. David's in a Philistine camp. Now remember, David, he'd, he'd been promised to be king. He'd been anointed to be king. And, uh, and even when Samuel went to, to anoint one of Jesse's sons as king, all the other sons came up and one came up and he was handsome. Oh, no, it's not him. He was talented. Oh, it's not him. Oh, he was, uh, you know, suave and sophisticated. Whatever it might be, not him. Who is it? Well, there's some runt out on the, uh, uh, on the fields watching the sheep, David, and he is the one that was chosen by God. Why? Because God doesn't look at the outward appearance. He looks at your heart. And it's your one thing in your heart that makes the difference in 2023. Will you follow Jesus in 2023? If you will just give him. I can't give you your one thing. But if you will seek God in 2023, you will have a blessed successful, significant, dynamic, power-filled life in Jesus' name. Amen.